Happy Friday, everyone. We have yet another storm possibly brewing in the Gulf of Mexico heading into next week as we break down the overall big picture going forward over the next seven to 10 days. If we expand the view this morning and take a look at the overall jet stream on the North American view, you can really see how this whole week ahead is going to play out as we have a predominant zonal flow that's coming in off the Pacific. That's bringing in some pretty warm air for October standards, especially out west, the further west you live. And there are gonna be some cooler shots at time that's gonna be coming in in parts of the east, but you're mainly gonna feel that into the morning hours as dry air likely heats up pretty quickly into the afternoon. So let's take a look at the overall you know, temperature anomalies and get a better picture on what this actually looks like for the next seven to 10 days. And there is that zonal flow. They've got a lot of record heat continuing to unfold across a good part of the West. Those record breaking temperatures will likely continue for the deserts, especially in the, around the Phoenix area. But you can see the plenty of warm air that bleeds in off the Pacific. That is that zonal flow that we're talking about. And the further West you live, the heat, the higher the temperatures are gonna be. And there's the cooler shots at times that does come into parts of the Ohio Valley, but especially in into the Northeast and the further North you live, we could even be seeing our first frost and freezes of the season, especially in some of the higher elevations. But what we're mainly concerned about in the week ahead is the tropics because this is october it's still a busy month and wow what stands out the most right here is this hurricane kirk this is a formidable category 445 mile per hour hurricane now the millibar is actually dropped down to 934 actually the same millibar is what barrel was when it went to a category five so yeah if they had some hurricane hunters out there right now this could easily very well be right on the cusp of category five criteria but the good thing about kirk is it's way out there in the atlantic and expected to curve out to sea and not gonna in impact anybody what we're mainly concerned about is this area of precipitation. This was um, 11, this was tropical depression, you know, 11, there was a storm down there in the Pacific that's gonna be crossing over into the Bay of Campeche. You can see the, you know, kind of bubbling up of thunderstorms right now on the satellite picture. And there's also another piece of energy that we've been kind of highlighted across the West, Western Pacific. All this energy is likely going to merge into the Gulf of Mexico heading into early next week. That's when we could start seeing some lower pressure start to lower and possibly tropical storm development. There is an, another system that's bringing some showers and thunderstorms this morning and around the Illinois region. Chicago region is getting some heavier thunderstorms. And as we move forward, here's what we're looking at. This is where you would typically see in the month of October of tropical system formation, all the areas that are highlighted in blue, but more favored areas highlighted in the green. So yes, it's not out of the ordinary for something that comes out from the Pacific side to cross over into the Bay of Campeche and then get picked up by the jet stream and likely shifted further east. And yet Florida looks to be heavily impacted, especially with the, some heavier rains, if not flooding rains, especially as we get into early next week. So right now, the National Hurricane Center has been going back and forth with this. Now it's back up to a 40% probability. This thing is going to be a named storm. We've already got Leslie, so this would be, if it were to be named, this would be Milton is next on the list. So yes, it's a combination of that 11E down there into the, you know, the Pacific side that's going to be crossing over and then that other piece of energy in the Western Pacific, this is going to merge. This is what the National Hurricane Center is looking at, a possible formation. And there definitely are signs we could be getting at least a minimal tropical storm by the time we head into early next week. So the overall, the big picture looks like this. We've got the zonal flow, right, coming in off the Pacific. So all these areas in orange and, and uh, red here, that's going to be plenty warm, uh, well above average for the October standards, which what you're typically used to this time of year. And then here are some cooler shots are going to be coming in for the upper peninsula of UP of Michigan, 
uh, back into areas of the Northeast, parts of the Ohio Valley is at times. There are going to get some cooler anomalies at times, but nothing drastic or anything like that. But you're definitely going to be feeling it more in the morning times uh, than overall in the in the overall afternoon times. But right now, here's the hazard map. We do, in fact, expect our first frost and freezes of the season, especially further north in northern New, New England here can't be you know rolled out to seeing these temperatures drop right down to about the 35 degree level and these areas up further north as well across the up of michigan back into northern areas of wisconsin and michigan could likely also see a kind of a light frost or freeze as well and then you're you just continue to bake across the west numerous records continuing to unfold out there and yes, they're already highlighting that heavier rain that's likely going to be expected, especially as we head into next week into Florida, especially Southern Florida. Because right now, the overall ensembles, especially on the European gunnets, are kind of hinting at that layer area of low pressure, one in the Western Caribbean, and then 11E that's coming off the Pacific. This is the area, this is the favorite area. This is where the National Hurricane Center has that 40% probability of something forming as areas of low pressure will likely start to come to fruition down there into the Southern Gulf of Mexico. But the good thing is we're gonna be watching these you know these fronts that come in most of these are kind of dry fronts but what's going to happen is that's going to keep whatever would likely form into the gulf at bay because there's going to be a lot of shear along the gulf so it's not going to allow this system to lift any further north out of the gulf it's probably going to be staying further south and spreading its heavier precipitation in florida so that definitely leaves most of the carolinas and everywhere they don't need any more rainfall and that's the shear in the front is going to keep that act that area dry so that is definitely a good sign but not a good sign pressing a lot of that precipitation further south into florida but as, as we go into monday you're going to start to feel that front especially in the morning times as temperatures drop well into the 40s and even some 30s likely showing up on the map that's when you could actually see some of your first frost and freezes especially further north you live further south back into illinois indiana yeah probably likely into the 40s especially in the mornings and then heat up into the afternoons behind that cooler shot of air but as we head into the gulf of mexico there's the system that crosses over this will likely form into a low pressure even the ensembles on the european at least have 100 percent probability it likely forms into a a tropical depression as we head into early next week and one of the things that we look for into helene was the water vapor transport index and unfortunately that hit like unprecedented levels actually 3000 was insane one and a half times um than than what the chart actually goes to right so that's why they had such extreme amount of rainfall and what's concerning, I mean, look at this, folks. I mean, this chart only goes to 1,500. We could be maxing out around 2,000 again, spreading that deep tropical moisture and feeding it into Florida. So I'm definitely concerned about flooding rains, if not some major flooding that would likely unfold, especially as we head into early next week, getting into Florida. So looking at the big picture on the ensemble front, here's what we're looking at. This is Kirk out here. That's the one that's a formidable category four storm that's gonna be lifting out the sea. And then this is Leslie also as well. This would also likely be a hurricane, if not another major hurricane. But yes, again, this is well out there in the Atlantic, not gonna affect any land mass whatsoever. And then there is what could be Milton that likely unfolds across this region. We'll have, you know, the front coming down with a shear along the Gulf here. That'll keep this system pressing any further north than this. So it's likely going to be central and southern Florida that's going to take the brunt of this system with very heavy rain over an extended time frame that could start as early as Sunday. So as we head into Sunday, heading into Monday morning, we're already seeing some of those heavier rains shift into central and southern Florida. And that would likely be the beginning of a very wet week ahead across that region, while most of the rest of the country is just experiencing that drier conditions with that Pacific flow, that more zonal flow that's coming on out west. 
and that corset just means high pressure with a lot of sinking air that's dominating a good part of the western regions you can see that dry air coming in off the overall precipital water uh, index map all those areas in brown that's dry air back behind it that's why you're allowed to cool or cool in the mornings heat up into the afternoon and then also produce that shear along the gulf coastal regions keeping this system at bay but you can see the red here this is the very heavy rain that likely spreads into central and southern florida and these areas are just have been inundated with very heavy rain already this year. Some of these areas are easily over 20 inches above average where you would typically be this time of year. So those soils are extremely saturated. So it's very concerning that we're gonna be seeing some of these rain amounts that we likely could unfold, and especially with that water vapor transport index being so high. So right now, look at the shear, folks. This is what we're talking about. This is why we have a 100% probability because there's not gonna be any shear down there into the Bay of Campeche. But as we lift further north northeast, it's going to run into some of those yellows more neutral and then starts to become a lot more unfavorable as that pressing of the cooler air comes in from the north and that's going to put a roadblock on this system and probably keep this system to not likely getting out of hand as far as the wind but that's not going to change anything as far as the heavier rains that are likely going to unfold so even right now the overall european and so european guidance you know drops it down to about a 999 millibar low pressure that would be a weak tropical storm heading into your wednesday time frame the overall icon has it just about the same maybe a little bit lower right around the 996 level and the latest gfs has it about the same right just even higher uh you know millibars so nonetheless we've got a lot of global consistency saying hey this could likely start to become a storm but likely keep it a little bit on the lower side as far as intensity but keep it on the intense front as far as the rain and the heavier rains that will likely unfold because yes what's concerning is we're starting to see those two and a half you know two and a, you know 2.5 inches that is what the what the, the atmosphere is saying it could actually produce in rain amounts on per hour basis that could lead to flash flooding and excessive flash flooding nonetheless so definitely we'll have to keep a watch on this system because right now it looks to be a formidable setup with very heavy rain and even a foot of rain in some of these locations on the latest outlook so for the rest of the country with that zonal flow you are going to be experiencing those drier conditions especially across this region where you're you know this is a very good sign uh, with all the cleanup that still is going to likely take months and the devastation that left with Helene and the cleanup that's going to be coming from out of that. So this is definitely a good sign. They're going to have some clearer skies and not much heavier rains or any rains to contend with, even, you know, to aggravate those problems and the cleanup can continue. And then further south, we'll definitely have to be concerned about those heavier rains that will likely spread into central and southern Florida into the week ahead so guys i appreciate you guys watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update why protect you before and after the storm